Hello everyone and welcome to yet another math video. In this video I will be going over systems of linear inequalities and linear programming. Uh, this video will be broken down into some subtopics like graphing systems of linear inequalities and an application of that. And then we'll take a look at linear programming basics, which will include a lot of vocabulary and linear programming examples. Let's get it. Graphing a system of linear inequalities. There is a small process here. The first thing you want to do is solve each inequality for y and then graph them. Solve and graph the inequalities. You want to shade the correct region and we will later call this finding the feasible region. And then you want to find the corner points of that particular region. And this is all set up for linear programming. So here we go. We can solve each of these first two linear inequalities. If you solve this, whoops, there we go. If you solve this for y, you'll have y is less than or equal to negative x over 3 plus 6. The second one here will be y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 16. And so now that we have this, all we have to do is plot these on the coordinate plane, as so. And you can see that there are four different regions, these, all these inequalities, the two we had to solve for y and the non-negative constraints that we have. Uh, you can see that we have four different regions. There's this quadrilateral region right here. That's one of the regions that these two boundary lines cross, uh, cross to make. We have a triangle up here, right, a three-sided triangle. There's a triangle over here. And all three of these regions that are here are bounded. They, uh, the area is not infinite. The area is finite. We could calculate the area of this triangle or this quadrilateral and so on. But the fourth area is just way out here. We need to know which area we're talking about, right? That's the second step is shading. Where do we shade? Well, uh, the good news is we only have to pick one point. And so I think what I want to do is I want to pick this point right here, this one. Eight comma or sorry three comma eight that's the point i want to pick and i promise this is going to work for both lines right as long as we don't pick a point on the line we're safe so three comma eight so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just substitute this uh x value and y value in for x and y in this inequality and this inequality we don't have to do it for the non-negative constraints because we already know we should be picking something from the first quadrant. So let me get these numbers substituted into each of these inequalities. All right, so here are the x and y values substituted in for the variables x and y. The red inequality matches this one, the blue inequality matches this one. When you simplify both sides of the red inequality, you get 8 is less than or equal to 5, and we know that's false. And when you sub, uh, simplify both sides of the blue inequality, you get 8 is less than or equal to 10, and that is true. So it seems as though this green point is on the correct side of the blue line, so we know we have to be... Uh, between the blue line and the x and y axis, that's fine. But it is on the incorrect side of the red line, so if we just move so we're on the other side of the red line, we are now in the correct space. So the shading here 
should be right in here like this. Let me shade this green because that's what we want. This is where we want to go. All right, so this is the area we are looking for. Now we have solved and graphed the inequalities. We have shaded, AKA found the feasible region. We need to find the corner points. And these are pretty easy to see right off the bat. You can see that basically what we're asking for, bringing a little geometry in here, is what are the vertices of this quadrilateral? What are the vertices? Well, we have one here, that's zero, zero. There's one here, that is eight, zero. There's one here, that is zero, six. And then there's one here. And I'll tell you what, I'm pretty proud of myself. I did a pretty good job of graphing here that I can just look at that and say that that is six comma four for that point right there. So here are the four corner points. Now, let's say you aren't as accurate as me as graphing. You, uh, your lines don't come out as straight, whatever. I'm being a little pompous here. I apologize, but let's say your graphs aren't perfect. How could you find this point right here? You can always come back to the original inequalities you had. And uh, a lot of students ask, well, could we use this set of inequalities? I say, yeah, but if you make a math mistake, then uh, you probably want to go to what was given just in case. You can use the given inequalities to uh, solve a system of equations, turn them into equations and solve a system of equations by, ready for it, uh, elimination, substitution. You can even use a matrix if you want. So right there, there are three ways. And just to, just to show you, if you set up a system of equations, I'm gonna do it below the graph. This is x plus three y this what equal to 18 this is 2x plus y is equal to 16. i like elimination so i'm going to multiply the top uh, the top equation by negative 2 and that gives me a new equation negative 2x minus 6y equals negative 36 it's a lot of negatives and the second equation is still 2x plus y equals 16. You can add these equations together now, negative 5y equals negative 20, y equals 4. Yeah, this looks like it's going to work out. I said the y value was 4 up here. You can substitute this back in for y in either equation, solve for x. I guarantee it's going to be 6. But you have ways to find these corner points. So from here, what I want to do is I want to move over into an application to get you just that much closer to linear programming. A company makes two types of skis, trick and slalom. Trick skis require six hours of fabrication and one hour for finishing. Slalom skis require four hours for fabrication and one hour for finishing. The max hours per day for fabrication and finishing are 108 and 24, respectively. Our goal here is to find the set of feasible solutions on a graph. And there is a process for this, most of which you have already seen. The rest of it comes at the front end. So in order, you notice there is no system of inequalities and that's something we have to find. We have to get to that point. So once we get the system of inequalities from there, it's no problem. We graph them, we shade, and we find the corner points. And that's it, we can be done. But the very first thing that we need to do here is define variables. Make that step one. So we will be using x and y 
And they don't have to be defined very crazily. You just have to say X is the number of, we'll say, trick skis. And Y is the number of slalom skis. I mean, don't, don't make it too difficult. X and Y need to both represent a number of something. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty easy. It's either trick or slalom. We don't know how many trick or slalom skis can be uh, produced. I presume at some point we will be wanting to find uh, the best way to use or see if we can even use all of the time that is available. All right, so we defined our variables. The second thing we want to do is find our, we'll call it an inequality system. All right, so step two, inequality system. So it looks like as far as the hours are concerned, we have two different types of hours going on. We have fabrication hours, so like six hours here. There we go. That's for fabrication. We have four hours here for fabrication. And respectively means uh, the first descriptor and the first number will be together. And the second descriptor, the finishing hours, and the second number will also uh, go together. So we have one hour for finishing on the trick skis and one hour for finishing in the slalom skis. And that is a maximum. We can't go above that. So I think the inequalities are going to end up looking something like this. So here we go. We have six hours of finishing per for each trick ski and four hours of finishing uh, sorry fabrication for each slalom ski and we have to be less than or equal to 108 hours for fabrication each type of ski uh, needs one hour for finishing so one x plus one y and there are 24 possible hours for finishing Cool. The only other ones that we need that are not anywhere to be seen are the non-negative constraints. And you may notice I'm calling these all sorts of things. I'm calling it an inequality system. You can also call these constraints. And they basically tell us where the feasible region is. What are feasible combinations of skis we can make. All right, so we have that. So let's solve these for y. And from here on out, it's going to be just like the last example. We have our inequality system, fine, our constraints. We can solve them for y. We can put them on the graph. We can shade. And then we can uh, find the corner points just for uh, good practice. So here's the graph for all of this. I took uh, very special care and time to make this exactly perfect. The only thing I didn't do was put the non-negative constraints in here. So these shaded areas should stop here and here. And as you can see, uh, the, the area here is just slightly red and the area here is just slightly blue but where they overlap is what we're interested in so you can pick any point in this region here in the first quadrant and from here to here and it will satisfy all the inequalities let me let me see what highlighting it green looks like oh yeah that's fine this is the feasible region. All right, pretty cool. So what are the corner points? Well, that's not too bad. We can answer this question pretty simply. We need the x-intercept of the red line. So if we can 
find the x-intercept here. That'll give us that point right there. We need the y-intercept for the blue line because that's the point that's right here. Luckily, we've already solved this equation for y, so we already know the y-intercept here is going to be 0, 24. No problem. Uh, this point is 0, 0. Pretty easy. And then there's this point right here, which I am going to actually defer to solving this system of equations because I have written so much here. I don't know what it is. Maybe you can back up the video and see it. But to find the x-intercept for the red inequality, we would just take 6x plus 4 times 0. We substitute 0 in for y. You'll notice at least one thing I can write over here about this ordered pair for this line is that the y value will be 0 for sure because it's on the x-axis. We only moved right to get to that point. So that being said, we substitute 0 in for y. We set this equal to 108. So we know 6x equals 108. So if you divide both sides by 6, you'll get that x equals 18, which means this is 18 comma 0. And finally, this magical point right here, uh, again, I'm going to solve by using a quick system of equations here. Um, I know it's 6x plus 4y equals 108. And right away, if I just multiply the second one by negative 6, because I can eliminate the x's, I'll get a negative 6x minus 6 y equals negative 144 which gives me the equation y equals a uh, negative 2y equals negative 36 and if you divide by negative 2 you'll get y equals 18 so at least for this ordered pair i know the y coordinate has to be 18 and if i use this in the blue inequality and change it to an equation, I'll find out very quickly that x will be 6. So the other coordinate here is 6, and I have found 1, 2, 3, 4 corner points, as you should with a quadrilateral. Let's get into linear programming now. And now we present linear programming. I feel like linear programming is super fancy. It's just a very fancy name for something that you've already been doing, basically. So linear programming is a process developed to help make decisions. Linear programming is everything you've just seen with the addition of an objective function. The objective function is a function used to find optimal values. An optimal just means either a maximum or a minimum. And in order to find the maximum or minimum, you substitute the values of all of the corner points of the feasible region into the objective function and pick the highest or lowest value. The highest value being the maximum, the lowest value being the minimum. Uh, and that's it. So let me give you a very simple example of what has changed between uh, what you just saw in the previous two slides and this slide right here. I promise I didn't go back in time. I just copied a slide and moved it over. So we're still talking about linear programming right now. So all linear programming is, everything that you see here that I just went over, finding the corner points, defining variables, finding your inequality system or your constraint system with your non-negative constraints, solving for y, plotting them down, finding the corner points, finding the correct shaded region, the correct region of feasibility first, and finding all the corner points of it, but way, 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 way back here, 
somewhere between step one and step two, we would have found, and I'm making this up, this was not part of the problem, we would have found some sort of objective function. And let's say this company is trying to sell these skis and make a profit. So profit, P for profit. And they make, uh, I don't know, $16 for each trick ski. And, uh, I don't know, $35 for each slalom ski. And again, you can't make the objective function before you define your variables. That has to be the first thing you do so you know which variable goes with which profit. Okay, so what do you do from here? You simply just start substituting numbers into the profit or the objective function, like this down here. So I went through and I substituted the x value and y value, 0 and 24, into the objective function. I substituted 6 in for x and 18 in for y in the objective function. And I substituted 18 for x and 0 for y in the objective function. Now I'm, I left 0, 0 out of this because I'm like 100% sure that if you substitute 0 in for x and for y, your profit is 0. Doesn't that make sense? If you don't make any skis, if this company doesn't make any skis, they're not going to make any profit. Duh. Okay, sorry. Had to get that out of my system. So, what you do then is you calculate all of these different values. 0 times 16 is 0. 35 times 24, uh, maybe I can do that. That's 840. I'm going to grab a calculator. Well, what do you know? It is 840. So for the next one then, we just have to compute 16 times 6 plus 35 times 18. Get 726. And I presume these would all be dollars at this point, so like that. And then 16 times 18, I already know is 288, all right. So if we were trying to maximize profit, I think we should have to go here. 840, that's the most amount of money. And the final thing that I would say about this is that you should summarize, I mean, in the real world, you should be summarizing your findings. If this were the case, if this company is producing both slalom and trick skis, and you look at this profit equation here, and it says you make zero trick skis and 24 slalom skis, and that's gonna give you the most interest, or the most profit, it's probably in this company's best interest to stop making trick skis. Just like, just looking at it from a decision, from a business standpoint, I would probably be really upset that we are making trick skis uh, because we're not making money on it. The only, I mean, the most money we can make is by selling the slalom skis. Regardless, you want to just write a small statement. The maximum profit can be made by producing 24 slalom skis and it's that simple interpret your answer uh, for the rest of this video i'm going to do i think two more examples front to back defining variables uh, coming up with the objective function in any you know creating the inequality the constraint system graphing these finding the corner points, uh, testing all of the corner points in the objective function, and writing a small statement for a conclusion. And they are going to be lengthy examples. Uh, so please stick out to the end of this video. There will be good examples to follow. An electronics firm manufactures two types of personal computers, a standard model and a portable model. 
The production of a standard model requires capital expenditures of $400 and 40 hours of labor. The production of a portable model requires capital expenditures of $250 and 30 hours of labor. The firm has $20,000 of capital and 2,160 labor hours available per month. If each standard computer gains $320 of profit and each portable computer gains $220 of profit, how many of each type of computer should be made to maximize the profit? In this case, you can see the question is asking how many of each type of computer should be made. So for our first step here, when we define our variables, we know we're going to be using X and Y. And the two different types of computers, we don't know how many are going to give us the maximum profit, would be the standard model and the portable model. So I will let X equal the number of standard model computers and Y equal the number of portable model computers. Now uh, for this new thing that we threw in the last slide, that was the objective function. You wanna figure out what the objective function before you even go into the inequalities of this. And the objective here is the very last thing we're trying to do, maximize profit. We want to maximize the profit. That is our objective. So we have to go back through and see what, what do we know about the profits of each computer? Well, we know the profit will be, I'm gonna call this P for profit, the profit will be $320 for each standard computer. So we can write 320 times X plus $220 for each portable computer plus 220Y. So this is the uh, equation that we are trying to maximize. All right, so the next thing we wanna do after that is create our uh, system of inequalities, AKA find our constraints. And of course, you know already that you cannot produce a negative number of computers. So we have to throw in these right away. X is greater than zero or equal to zero and Y is greater than or equal to zero. That's fine, those are always going to be there. The next uh, inequality that we can work with, well, we can see that the computers, whether it is the standard model or the portable model, are described in two different ways. We have two different characteristics that we know about them. We know the capital expenditures characteristic and we know the labor statistics. So we have capital expenditures of $400 and 40 hours of labor for the standard model and capital expenditures of $250 and 30 hours of labor for the portable model. So we can have an expenditures inequality, which would look like this. And we have a less than or equal to here because we, I mean, if you're a business, you don't wanna go above this amount, you wanna stay below or at this amount. That is how much money that uh, a business has in the bank. And they say $20,000 of capital, that's the amount of cash that is available to that business. The number of hours, here you can see we need 40 hours for a standard model and 30 hours for a portable model. But again, we cannot go above this many hours. So the hours inequality will look something like this. Oops, just the lower one. And that's it. We have our system of inequalities. We have our objective function. Now we just have to solve these for y and put them on a graph. Okay, so a lot going on here. Uh, each of these inequalities was solved for y in the following way. So that one went there, and that one went there. Uh, I think you guys can see the pattern at this point. You can subtract the x term from both sides and then divide by whatever uh, coefficient y has. And then uh, you graph these over here like this. 
So we have the non-negative constraints, of course, you have to have those graphed. And the top inequality here, the top green inequality and the top blue inequality are the red line. And the bottom blue inequality and the bottom green inequality are the blue line over here. All right, so we have our reason region of feasibility. Uh, you can check any point, to be honest. Um, usually it's probably best just to pick something close to X, uh, sorry, close to the origin. So this point here is five comma five. You can tell uh, that this graph is jumping by five. So this would be five, 10, 15, 20, so on, so on, so on. Uh, and if you use the ordered pair five comma five, this uh, inequality will be true and this inequality will be true. So we need to be shading in that particular region. Now when we do that, that gives us four, uh, let me say four corner points, one, two, three, four, maybe it's like right, I don't know, right there. And we have to find those now. So the whole process, again, variables, defining variables, check, objective function, yep, system of inequalities, yep, solve any that you can for y, okay, graph, all the inequalities, find the region of feasibility, find the corner points, that's where we are right now, finding the corner points. So some of these corner points are pretty easy to see. I made a very big error here. This is not 720, it is 72 which makes a heck of a lot more sense. So the y-intercept of the blue boundary line here is the y-intercept of the lower inequality here. And that is 0, 0,72, okay? We know this point here is 0, 0. We know this point here is the x-intercept of the y, I'm sorry, the red boundary line. And the red boundary line is represented by this top inequality. In the red boundary line, we can find the x-intercept. It's probably easier to do from the original. Again, if you make any mistakes with math, that would uh, show in your x-intercept uh, if you use your uh, inequality that's been solved for y. So to find an x-intercept, again, you just substitute 0 in for y. And so we'll find the x-intercept of this inequality. Um, x-intercept. So again, the x-intercept will always be a y-value of 0. So we'll have 400x plus 250 times 0 equals 20,000. And to find a y-intercept, you do set it equal to 0 or equal and not with an inequality. So this term eventually becomes zero because when you multiply by zero, it becomes zero. When you add zero, it doesn't change the other term. So we have 400x equals 20,000, which means that x will be 50. So the x coordinate for this x-intercept will be 50 comma zero. And then lastly, we have this point here, which requires us to use a system of equations. And it's where the red and the blue boundary lines intersect. So we would have to use these two inequalities in a system of equations. We have to change these to equal signs. And then solve for x and for y. Now I have that math done off the video and I'm not going to put this in the video, but I am going to tell you that this ordered pair here is 30 comma 32. And you should be doing the math to get this answer because just by looking at this graph, I don't know that I would have been able to correctly guess 32 would have been the Y value. The x value looks pretty easy to tell here, but the y value is not as easy. So you should be doing the math all the time anyway.
So we have the four corner points. We, again, we did the variable definitions, we did the objective function, we did the system of inequalities, aka the constraints, we solved them for y. If we could, we plotted all of them on the uh, coordinate plane, we found the region of feasibility, we found the corner points, and now we just have to check the profit. So we take each of the corner points and substitute them into the profit function for x and for y. The point zero zero, I promise, will get you no profit. Again, if you make nothing, you earn nothing, which makes a lot of sense. The other three points, though, we will check in the profit function. So here are the profit functions with all of the correct variables, uh, sorry, values substituted in for the variables, 0 for x, 72 for y. 0 for x, 72 for y, so on and so on. The last thing we have to do is actually calculate these numbers and we pick the highest number and I'm out of space, but I will say a statement that you can write down to interpret uh, the final answer. All right, here are the profit numbers and we are trying to maximize the profit, which means we should probably pick the largest number here, the maximum number. So that would be 16,640. If we do this with units, $16,640 is the maximum profit. The sentence that you could write for this would be something like, the electronics firm should produce 30 standard model computers and 32 portable model computers to maximize their profits to be $16,640. Long example. I've got one more for you on the next slide. Oh my goodness. Uh, ready for the final example. A farmer can buy two types of plant food, mix A and mix B. Each cubic yard of mix A contains 20 pounds of phosphoric acid, 30 pounds of nitri nitrogen, and 5 pounds of potash. Each cubic yard of mix B contains 10 pounds of phosphoric acid, 30 pounds of nitrogen, and 10 pounds of potash. The minimum requirements for the month are 460 pounds of phosphoric acid, 960 pounds of nitrogen, and 220 pounds of potash. If mix A costs $30 per cubic yard and mix B costs $35 per cubic yard, how many cubic yards should the farmer blend to meet the minimum requirements at a minimal cost? Also, what will the cost be? I think for this example, I'm just going to get everything up here and talk through it. So here's all the information you need. All right, there's a lot of information that just sort of appeared on the screen in front of you. So let me run through it really quickly. Um, the first thing we do is define the variables. We're trying to figure out how many cubic yards of each should the farmer buy. So I let x be equal to the number of pounds of mix A and y be equal to the number of pounds of mix B. The objective function, effectively what this farmer is trying to do is minimize the amount that he or she will be spending. So what, we, what I did here was I called this cost function. The objective function is the cost function because the mix A costs $30 per cubic yard, right, X, and mix B costs $35 per cubic yard, right, that's B, or that's Y. Then we came up with the constraints. The first two I don't need to explain. Those are pretty standard at this point. The first inequality here, one, this describes the amount of phosphoric acid. So 20 in mix A, 20 pounds of phosphoric acid in mix A, 10 pounds of phosphoric acid in mix B. The second inequality here is nitrogen. There are 30 pounds of nitrogen in mix A, that's 30 times X, and 30 pounds of nitrogen, uh, where is it here, yep, in mix B, 
30 times y. And they need more than 960 pounds, or minimum 960 pounds of nitrogen. Check. The last one here is for the potash. The potash is 5 pounds for mix A, so 5 times x, and 10 pounds for mix B, 10 times y, greater than or equal to 220 because the minimum is 220. So all of these are greater than or equal to. Minimum means you have to have that amount or more. Equal to that amount or more. So greater than or equal to. So if you solve all of these three inequalities for y, I have them labeled so you can see them where they uh, go pretty easily. Graph them on a coordinate plane as I did here. Find the region of feasibility. You'll notice that the region of feasibility is way out here. Normally it's somewhere in here by the origin. In this case, it's way out here, not by the origin at all. In fact, it's everything else, including the constraints. Notice the shading does not go past the y-axis or past the x-axis. All right, so what's going on here? This area is what we would say is unbounded. It just continues forever in all the directions. So it's going up forever, it's going right forever. So the, the area here is unbounded, which means technically the farmer could buy, uh, let's see, this would be 50 cubic yards of mix A and 50 cubic yards of mix B and would meet the requirements of the phosphoric acid, the nitrogen, and the potash needed for uh, to sustain the farm. But this would also cost a lot more money, so we don't want that. We want to minimize the cost. So finding the corner points is a little bit different. We still have to find out where the first inequality has the y-intercept because that's a corner on the shaded region where the first inequality and second inequality intersect, and I did that already. So you would have to set uh, these two as equations in a system and solve for x and y. Then you'd have to see where the second inequality and the third inequality intersect. So you'd have to set these two equa as equations in a system and solve for x and y, which I've done for you here. And then the third inequality here, we need to know what the x-intercept is. So if you substitute 0 in for y, that's 5x would be equaling 220. 220 divided by 5 is 44. So there's everything going on. We have our corner points. There won't be any other corner points. But you can see, for, again, for the shaded region, there's a corner here. There's a corner here. There's a corner here. And there's one way down here. So we have four corner points to check. And honestly, I don't know which one is going to end up being cheapest. So I'm going to check all four corner points. Here are all of the corner points uh, substituted into the function here, into the objective function. All of the x coordinates, 0, 14, 20, and 44, as you can see, are in the x, replaced x here. All of the y coordinates, 46, 18, 12, and 0, 46, 18, 12, 0, replaced the y variable here. You plink all of these expressions into a calculator, and since we are minimizing something here, you pick the smallest. So $1,020 per month for this farmer to have happy crops. So again, a statement. Um, the farmer should buy 20 pounds of mix A and 12 pounds of mix B to minimize the cost of the plant food. The minimal cost will be $1,020. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm exhausted from making this video. Um, I hope this gives you a better understanding as to how linear programming works. I wish you the best of luck.